Let's see, where am I? There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, elementary on Manor Recharge for October 20th, 2022. My name is Valentin Guerra, and alongside the beautiful Debbie Pingle, we'll be here as your instructional technology specialist monitoring your chat and helping you out. Let's see our housekeeping rules. Make sure you keep your mic muted. Feel free to type questions in the chat section. If you have not registered today, use do so at the professional development system using workshop number 253659. And remember, check in using the remote checking code PSJ Tech in the PD system. Starting off today is Mari Alcalá with Angelica Cruz. Uh, Maria Galá is a teacher at Guerra Elementary, and Angelica Cruz is a teacher in CIT at Guerra Elementary. Uh, Angelica, I am going to stop sharing so you can share it yourself, and go ahead and take it away. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Angelica Cruz. I'm the CIT for Guerra Elementary, and today me and Ms. Alcalá we're going to be presenting on an app that is available on Clever called um, called uh, Extra Math. So uh, I don't see the slides. Let me see. So I can present from it. You should be able to present. Are you having issues? Yes. I can see your screen. Yes. Let's see. Ms. Debbie, do you have the Google Slides available? We put our presentation in there. I do. Hold on. Do you want me to send you the link so you can open it? Yes, please. Just put it in the unmute and recharge uh, group session. Did it come through? For those of you that are just signing in, make sure you register on the PD system. And then check in with remote checking code PSJA Tech. Good to go. Okay. 
There it is. You see the slide. Ready? Okay. So the agenda for today in our part of the presentation is that we're going to go ahead and explain what is extra math, when and how much extra math is good for the students, and how to make reports and how to reward students for progress. This is the icon that you would see when you get into Clever. As soon as you sign into Clever, you would be able to see an icon that looks like this, and this is the icon you would go to uh, use the program Extra Math. Mm -hmm. What is Extra Math? Extra Math is a math facts fluency program. It was originally just designed for elementary school students, but it's also used for older students for review or to catch up. Students of all ages can benefit from extra math. Extra math works best used regularly like a math vitamin. Um, what I, when I was looking into this application, extra math is not something that is gonna teach the concept. It's just something that is gonna continue with once the concept is introduced, it's something that you're gonna use to continue and so have a better understanding what the concept is all about. And it also doesn't teach strategies, it's just more like a refresher for students. Hello, my name is Mary, Mary Alcala. I'm here, a uh, fourth grade teacher at Guerra Elementary. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more to with with Miss Cruz, but she's talking about extra math. Extra math is a it's a really great, great tool. It's a really great practice and progress monitoring, and it's an uh, informal assessment here at our campus. We're very uh, campus data driven. So basically it, it helps. Uh, it, it's a friendly data and uh, for teachers and students as well. Um, just so you know, it's a uh, it doesn't teach strategies, right? It's just to uh, increase the student's um, fluency, math basic fluency. This is a really quick um, student view. This is basically what the students see in their screen. It's basic um, uh, operations, which it starts with adding, subtraction, and then it moves on to um, multiplication and division. Okay, as you can see, the students are going to see the problem. It's going to be timed. It, it gives them um, how many faces, how, how, happy faces, how many questions they got correct, right? Um, on top, on the right top corner, it shows the students' information. And of course, um, there's going to be like a teacher uh, giving the instructions on what to do to the students. They can also hide the teacher, you know? Um, and of course, they can also mute it. Okay. And just so you know, just to add a little bit more to Ms. Cruz, it's it's an extra math uh, online program that you, it's available on extramath.org. And it's a free uh, freemium account. Basically, it's uh, offers the basic. That's what I use the basic features um, at no cost. Of course, there's also there's also like a $50 plan, but I don't I'm not going to waste. My, I'm not going to spend money on that, but because basically I use the basic. In my classroom. So when and how much of extra math do I use in my classroom? Um, in order for extra math and to help increase students fluency, I suggest and even the, the extra math suggests to just use it uh, five to 10 minutes daily. Uh, but in order for for it to work for students and for, you know, um, to increase their fluency, it needs to be set up a time in your uh, daily schedule. So I basically use it before math instruction. Um, after breakfast, I give them a 10 minute, right? Of course, we're going to have those um, finishers, right? Those students are going to finish quickly. So what I assign to them is, okay, I assign them another application, which is ST Math, no, uh, ST, yeah, ST Math, the Penguin. And they work on that depending on the scale of the week. So they already know. And also, I like to proje project my, my data. I'm going to show you right now how the data looks. I'm going to I project it on my screen every day, every morning so that way the students are aware and they even tell me, "Miss, miss, I'm already done. Can I can you refresh your screen?" So they want to know what they got cuz it's a very it's a very friendly data. All right. So just uh, let me just recall just 
10 minutes. It doesn't take that much, even five minutes. Okay. All right. So this is my uh, dashboard. This is my extra math dashboard. Um, this is my roster. As you can see here, we have our scores and what operation they're working on. And on top, it's WTFSS. It's the days of the week, right? Of course, Saturdays and Sundays, they don't work on it. Um, yes, they can work on it at home, but I believe when they do it here in the classroom, they don't, they're just doing it on their own without any assistance, which is good. That's what we need. Um, and as you can, I can easily see who is my struggling. Um, my top one, two, three, four, my top four students, I see that they're struggling and I'm calling this is fourth grade class and they're struggling with addition, basic addition. So I can see who I can in, uh, do intervention on or who I can work with on small group. Uh, and yellow, um, I'm also going to uh, talk about the, 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 the code, the, what is it, the levels, right, the, the data. And if you see an arrow going up, right, this is a progress, how much are, are they pro, uh, doing progress, progression, right, if they're increasing. Um, so let's see. Oh, and this, is, uh, this also helps me. I do it every day. However, it, it, it's really uh, beneficial to me because since it's established in my classroom, every they have to do it every day. And even if I, they even ask me, Mister, do I do extra math already? Like they're there, like they already know our what our schedule looks like. So as you can see, I have some empty spots. That means that those students were absent. So if I don't remember who was in here in school, you know, like who was absent that day on Wednesday or Tuesday or Friday. That kind of guides me. Now, if they're in gray, it's because um, they didn't complete the session for that day. And like I said, it's only one time of the day and it's only one session, which lasts five to uh, 10 minutes. Here, um, I'm gonna be talking about what you have available, which is um, the send flyers at home, change programs, class setting, um, class report, list of pins, export class data, and certificates. So I'm going to show you a little, th um, little guidance on how it looks. Um, print flyers. So what I like about extra math that you can print the flyers so that way the parents are aware um, on what their children is working or if they want them to work at home, right? That depends on the teacher. Um, you have the student's name and then it, it's very good. It's very cool extra math because it gives you options of the print layer, uh, print flyers, right? In Spanish, of course, my my parents are, my students' parents are Spanish, so I usually use the Spanish. Now, um, like I said, the program gives four operation. It is um, for, it is guided like for to use for kinder all the way to fourth grade. But again, even middle schoolers uh, would middle school students would benefit if they're strugg struggling with the basic facts um, or the basic math foundation uh, for beginning addition. That would be benefit for kinder. Uh, then we have beginning addition and subtraction for first grade. Then we have addition and subtraction for second grade. Then we have addition, subtraction and multiplication for third grade. And then we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for fourth grade. And but fifth grade can also use it. Just because it's a, it has a, a grade there, um, you can change it. You can select the programs to change it. As you know, my students, those are my students, and um, you, the ones that are struggling, they 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 have only assigned two operations because I mean they the computer the program sees that they're struggling so. They, it's starting off with two basics, but of course they first need to complete the addition. They need to reach the 100 score and then they move on to the set to the subtraction. So it's like a, a process. Now, again, this is my data. This is my class report. This is what you would see. Um, the green, the I mentioned the green, they're doing good. Uh, the red, they're they're struggling. The yellow. Um, they had 20, 10, what is it? 10% to 25% incorrect or too few answers given. All right. All right, so it also gives you a detailed a student report. This is one of my students. As you can see, we started in August with the program, September and October on top it has the calendars and it's color coded depending on how um, they were uh, worked, their progress, right? Um, now they started my this student started on on. Okay, 
first, basically I'm looking at this one, but I'm gonna look at addition because that's the first operation that is given assigned to the student. He started on August the 24th and he scored a 72. But then he mastered the addition and he scored 100. So then he finished, it even tells you what day he finished. He finished on the 9th, uh, September 22nd, and it says how many days it took him to complete the addition, which is 19 days. Then after he completed the addition, he was moved on to subtraction, the second operation. And it says when he started, what score he got at the beginning, which was a 59, and then he finished it by scoring 100. And then now in October the 3rd, he finished the subtraction and it took him seven days to finish the, the subtraction. So it was, he was really proud. All right, then after the subtraction, it comes to multiplication. He started on, on October the 6th, he scored a 77, and is now he's now in, this is his seven days. Well, when I printed out this report, right? And he scored an 18. Here, you see how instead of increasing, it's decreasing. Well, that day when he started multiplication, I was out for the day and it was his first day starting multiplication. So he was using his multiplication chart, the one he has on, on his desk. So basically he was using it. And it's, it, um, this program is for, you know, just for him to do it on his own. Um, not no, no multiplications on, on hand, right? So that is why when I came back, like, oh, so, and he got an 18 because I told him, no, you can't use that, you know? All right, and it, it even shows him uh, which ones he's getting right and which ones he's struggling and which ones has he has not yet um, been tested on. Okay, so this is a really, really good data um, and it's easy. Uh, this is a key guide uh, for the calendar. If it's green, it's 90% correct. If it's yellow, 10 to 25% incorrect or too few answers, red, that's the concern, more than 25% incorrect or a very few answers given. And the gray one, like I said, it's when they don't complete the session. Um, all right, and then this is the uh, fluency. It also gives you information about the floor, uh, fluency score, where the cal uh, calculator is located, uh, what the arrow going up, right? The uh, progress, what it means and the usage again. And again, I also like the extra math because it gives you a, a list of uh, pins. You can print them out. Uh, this is my class roster. I'm just hiding some of the numbers, right? Because it's confidential. Um, my, their student's name, a four digit number. And this is like my list for teacher, for the teacher list. And then you can also cut and paste and send, or cut and send them out to the students, you know? Um, and so, yes, it's very easy to print the, the, the list. All right, and you can also export class data. That's really good if, you, uh, if you're if you an Excel sheet person, like you, if you wanna use that, that's very good. Um, but I really like the, the data that is already projected there on Extreme Math. So I don't really use the Excel sheet. All right, um, also the Extra Math gives uh, certificates awards to students who have completed the, the operations. For example, I have uh, Florecita Eduardo, Jaden, um, and Christian that already finished with addition, and it even tells me the date he, they finished, and then Jaden and Eduardo finished subtraction as well, and then you can also print out the certificates in another language, not just English, you know, uh, so it's really easy, and um, it's, you don't have to, uh, it's very friendly, it's very easy, and this is the, a copy of the certificate, you just sign your you just do your signatures, but there's another uh, certificate where you don't have to put your signature, it just types your name. So whatever works best for you. Um, but what I did actually, I, uh, I downloaded this and then with my uh, computer on the Adobe, I did my signature and just copy paste my signatures on the certificate and just print them out. So it's whatever uh, way works, whatever you like. Um, okay, and now um, the fun, well, not fun, but the easy part. Uh, my goal for here was for you to start using extra math with your students. Now I am going to show you where you can download that app. So that way you can start already tomorrow because it's very, very easy to, to use. I'm gonna log in into my Clever account really quick. 
All right, and as you can see, I already um, have it here on Clever. I have it here on my uh, teacher's uh, page. Now, I know I was one of those teachers that I wasn't aware that you can install, like Clever, it's like a phone, you know, like a phone where you can download apps and everything. Well, uh, that's why I really love Clever. You can just look at the same way you can download um, apps on your phone. If you go to your library here on Clever, and uh, here there's tons of apps and apps, uh, websites that you can add to your Clever. So that way it makes it easier for students to log in. They don't have to, oh, you know, create a new username credentials. It's already, right. once they log into uh, my students, once they log in into Clever, they select the app, they automatically sign them in. So they don't have to type in their username or password. So basically what you do, you go to library, um, you, um, you look for the app, the, here's extra math. And now the cool thing about extra math that it even tells me who are the teachers using it at, at my school. So but in the morning, it was four students, four teachers or five teachers. And now we have seven, which is good. That's great. I mean, it's, it's increasing. That's what I want to see. Um, and then it also tells me how many teachers in my district, in our district, are using extra math. Um, it, it was less, I know, but now it's increasing 22, which is good. Um, so then, and then the overall teachers, how many teachers are using extra math? So let's try to kind of increase the usage in our district, you know, in our campus, of course, um, because it's really easy. You just, um, uh, there's going to be like a, a blue, um, what is it? But in where it says installing, you just install it. Um, let me see. I can see. Let me see uh, one that I don't have. I don't, I don't think I have this one. So basically, you click on extra math and it's going to have the button where it says install. And you just install it. And it's going to ask you if you want to um, synchronize with your Clever account. So you just give them permission and you just put allow and continue. And it will automatically uh, have your roster, your students roster there. So I challenge students, uh, teach students, teachers to start using extra math. It's just five to 10 minutes uh, a daily. It needs to be daily, consistent. And then um, try and browse <laughs> applications on Clever to start using Explore. All right, that's basically it. And in the chat, I'm gonna go ahead and put the teacher's guide where it gives you more information about this app and you can look uh, what, how it can help you in your classroom. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you so much. Awesome job, ladies. I missed part of it because I had to hop over to the middle school session. Valentin, are you here? Come in, come in. I thought he had stepped out. So, <laughs> so why, before he gets back to introduce our next presenter, Please make sure that you are registered today and signed in because that's how we're going to do our door prizes at the end. So I do have that information in the chat uh, for you to register. So I'm going to turn it back over to Val. Thank you, ladies, so much. As, if anybody has questions, just put them there in the chat. There was one and we'll question. And continue. Awesome job. Miss um, Valdez had asked, can we use this for middle school math? And I also got in late, so I wasn't sure if it was a district thing or a uh, personal uh, they talked about it they did talk about it and they said that it was originally made for elementary but it can be used for review for middle school great thanks Val. Mm -hmm. all right hello everyone and next olivia marquin our teacher cit from Levas elementary olivia take it away i'm going to stop sharing so you can thank you Okay, I am presenting an extension and I know that we have flip and I know that we use other things, but this is just another resource in case you're having technical difficulties with flip or something. Um, this is called record to slides. So the things I'm going to cover is where do you find it? What is it? Um, a very quick setup and then some of the uses that I've seen other teachers, even my principal, use it for. Um, we have, of course, like I mentioned, this is a an extension with Chrome. So if you're on your, um, what is it called? 
the Microsoft Edge, and it's not ideal for that. We're working with Chrome this time. So I went ahead and added the actual link and what it what it does is it'll redirect you. Of course, I already have it installed, so it doesn't give me that option. It gives me remove, but here you would find like install. And one of the things, once you set it up, once you install it, then there's a very quick setup. I am going to take you through that process very quickly. Like I said, you go to the extensions, you add it. Um, it's allowed by our PSJs. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> and the very first time that you do sign up, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. It's going to ask you what you're using and you're going to click on your Google account, your PSJ one. And then it's going to ask you, of course, if you allow it. And then it's going to give you a bunch of permissions that you need to allow like your microphone, your camera, all of that. Once you set that up, which doesn't take long, this is key. The very first time that you set it up, you're gonna come in and you're gonna go ahead and see it. Well, on mine, you can see it here. You might have to refresh your page when you're first installing it, but after that, anytime that you go into your, any slide that you're in, it'll, it'll be right here ready for you. And in this case, once you do click record, I'm I'm not going to do it because I'm already using the camera for teams, so it's going to show me like unavailable. But what you do is when you click here, it would generate like a preview and it would ask you to record. So I took a screenshot of me earlier <laughs> messing around with it. And this is basically what it tells you. It's It's telling you that it's ready to record the video. And then when you click on this, it starts recording. When you click again, it pauses and it does give you an option for a preview. If you're not pleased, you can just go ahead and like delete it, start again. But if you, the only thing about this one is I know like with Flip, you can pause and then come back here. Once you stop recording, it's either yes, you're ready for it or no, it's you need to delete it and start again. Once you're pleased with your outcome, it generates this kind of a view. And if you were ready to. If you were OK with it, you would just go ahead and press OK. And the very first time that you press OK, like you need to do a run through because the very first time you do it, it's even though it says it's recording, it takes forever. It gets lost in your drive. The second time that you do it. Is when you're actually going to be able to see your. Recording. So in this case, I pulled out a recording that we used just last week. We had our curriculum night and to make it easier so that not each kid would have to log into their flip and put everything together. We just went ahead and did this and each class recorded a little message for the parents and that was what we did. So this can be used for student responses. We can do fluency checks with it like each student has a device and from first and up, I know they're using Chromebooks, so it's an extension that they can actually download and you don't have to like. You don't always have to be there. This is something that they can do for practice on their own. It can be used for projects or collaborative work and it's just you're they're already working on slides. It just makes sense for them to stay on it. And I was going to play a little clip of the one that. We used with my class. So they just made like a little presentation, a little video just to welcome their parents. And they were just excited because they could see themselves recording, so it was great. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions or I can go back and um, review something. If you can try to share the audio because we couldn't hear it. It didn't. <gasps> How terrible. Hold on. Let me try again. Share. I love the extension. It seems so easy. Yes. Yeah, so my principal uses it. Um, he's beginning to do like instead of a newsletter, it's kind of like a video. So he kind of like tells us what just catches us up on whatever we need to, and he sends it in slides. That's why he wanted something that was easy and I said, oh, I have the thing, the perfect thing for you. 
Um, awesome. Include, there we go. Let me try one more time. And this one was just our curriculum night. I know for another thing that I did when we first started and we were starting off the school year, we created our own rules and then I had them um, record them because I said, these are not my rules. You, we made them together, so you need to follow them. So then we would review them every day and they, they liked seeing that they were part of it. Just a little of what you can do. Any questions? I don't see any questions in the chat. Perfect. Great. So lastly, but not least, it's me. I'm going to be doing a presentation on, um, my name is Valentin Guerra, and I'm your instructional technology specialist for the FAR campuses in elementary. I'm going to be talking about annotate.net. Let me just do that real quick. Let's see, I wanted to see myself in here this way. Great, here I'm in a pencil and I picked it because I was annotating. So annotate.net is a Chrome extension to allow you to annotate on any Chrome tab. There's other features, but I'm just going to focus on this. You can create an annotate account and use it as an extension. So you need to add it first on your uh, on your Chrome extension. So you go to the Chrome Web Store and you go and look for it. As you can just type Chrome extension annotate.net. Make sure that you look for that and it looks. Well. That's not what it looks like. Let me do it again. Annotate.net Chrome extension. And then it takes you there. And it's this one over here. Like the other extension that we're talking about, I already have it installed, which is this one right here with the arrow going down in blue. I can only remove. But go ahead and select it. Once you select it, I'm going to show you boom, 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 how it looks that on incognito it's easy. Uh, no. so it will take you here and you will have to sign up and log in free sign up it's a free sign up you'll get a trial of the premium you get some additional features on the premium but i'm only going to be talking about the ones that are not premium. so it's sign up for an educator account you must be an active instructor k-12 school and higher ed to, to use it through your institution email address and this is what it looks like i download it from the curriculum I went and grab a passage. This is El Camino del Hijo de Papel, por grande. So in here, this is what you see. In the free version, you get access to writing and to highlighting and also to text boxes. So I am going to go in here and I'm going to show you what it looks like. It just writes above it. So la mayoría de los trabajadores chinos llegaron a los Estados Unidos a mediados del siglo XIX. We need to highlight this. We can highlight. Oh, this is the eraser. We can highlight it any of these colors and we just go like this and highlight. If you want to write something we hear, of course, if you're not using your finger or um, a pen, it's kind of hard to write with your mouse. But you can, if you want, make like a little drawing that looks like a tree. But you can use the text feature and you can say, Move it around and put. Este siglo fue muy importante. Anything that you put in here, you can save it and it will save it into your annotate account and you'll have it in there. You have it access. You can share it through Google Classroom. I was researching a little bit more stuff, but literally you are able to annotate in here and save any annotation that you have as in your student device in any Chrome extension. It's free for you. You can record the screen while you're doing it as well. And in the premium, you get to take a snapshot and add into the document as well. And you can use this red light that if you were doing a presentation, if I click on it, I don't have access anymore. I don't want to upgrade to the premium. So these are the ones that you can. If you want to clear it real quick, you can press on the trash can it will delete the annotation and you can also minimize it so it doesn't look that big. This is annotate.net. One of the things that I was talking that that I was discussing also and I need to learn more of these features is that you can create once you put the Google extension activities through annotate.net and have your students also 
uh, lively annotate. I will be learning more on that. You learn more of that and let us know and we'll be more than happy to showcase it to you as well later. That's pretty much it. We're going to be discussing it next Wednesday. I want some of you to be testing it out. I gave it as a tech tip of the week. I want to get some feedback. This is the courses and annotate done and how it looks. I have the CIT class and I created I can create an assignment in here and see what I have. And I will show you some of my web annotations that I created on a slide. It saves it in here and on the slide. See it go automatically goes in there and saves it, opens it up and it's ready to go. Is there any questions on annotate.net? So um, the students would be able to save it or, or it saves it automatically? If the saves it for you. Uh, the students will have to doubt uh, to get the extension. Uh -huh. I'm trying to work with our MIS department to see how we install extensions on student devices for right now. This is for you. You can actually oh. have it and add it to the students and they can use Cami for right now to annotate on any of the uh, of the documents that you share with them. Boom, boom, boom. No other questions? I guess it's time for that raffle. Did everyone sign in? Did everyone sign in? I'm going to run a report right now so we can see who so will we have a, We have a few people in here, and I want us to make sure you make sure you have to be present to win. Second, you have to register and say, <laughs> Ms. Anna Valdez, go ahead, sign in right now. I'll oh. put it again on the chat just so you can sign it. Boom. Go to this link to take you to the professional development website to this this workshop and then use PSJ Tech as your uh, remote checking code. While you do that, I'm going to start sharing my screen and starting up the claw. Ms. Valdez, let us know when you're able to sign in so that we can run the report. Yep, we want everybody to be included. Yes, because we love y'all. So annotate.net, I learned it while, during one of my visits in Garcia Elementary, the, one of the VLP teachers was using it, and I really thought that was a cool tool to share with everyone. It's PSJ so, Tech, all lowercase. Awesome. Debbie, how many people? OK, let me just run real quick. See who's going to win our prize packs today. While Debbie's starting that, I'm just going to finish up and talk about the last lights and just remind you that this Saturday we do have an Armuda and Recharge live. What does that mean? You can come and hang out with me and Debbie. We're going to be at Isaguila Middle School doing a flip hunt, or you will do a 10 to 15 minute activity at the beginning, running around, getting codes, getting scanning QR codes, getting letters, and producing a final resort through flip. And then we're going to show you step by step on how to create this activity within your own classroom, within your campus, have those students engaged using flip. Next week, we will have our novel effect on October 25th. And that is this is a Q&A and training done by us from 4.15 to 5 and our last Unmute and Recharge, October 27th from 4.15 to 5. Until next month. Until next month, yeah. Okay, we have 17 people signed in. Woohoo! I love that number. All right, I'm going to start sharing my screen. And start number picker. We're going to do two. And here we go with the first one. Number four is, is Susanna Garcia. Susanna, Susanna Garcia. Are you here? 
All well, right, thank, thank you. Congratulations, Susana. We'll be delivering that to you as soon as we can. The next winner is number three, Debbie. Um, Yvette Galindo. Yvette Galindo. And I forgot to share my audio, but I could not even hear anything because it was so loud. Going Yvette, up. are you here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. yes congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Don't forget again one more time. Just push it out. Come back and hang out with us. It's from 9 to 10 at Isaguira Middle School. We will be having tacos and coffee at 8.30. Debbie and I will be there smiley faces because we didn't get that much sleep. No, I'm just kidding. But we will be there ready to hang out with you and play some flip. Yes, and if you're going to come, register if you can today because we're trying to decide how many tacos to order. <laughs> yeah, I don't want 30 of uh, 80 people there and we only order 40. Then you're going to have to share a taco. All right. Thank you so much for our fabulous presenters and everyone attending today. Have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend. Hopefully we'll see you Saturday morning. Woohoo! Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank, thank you. you.